Well, good morning, everybody. We're going to get started here in just a few minutes. I've got a couple of announcements we want to go through real quickly if we can. Let's not forget tomorrow night we have prayer night. Uh, please make sure that you come out at 630 and uh, we've been just having a great time of prayers. We've been coming together and uh, just uh, believe the Lord is going to hear our, cr our prayers, hear our cries, and that he's going to answer uh, every need. Amen. And uh, then we also have coming up this Wednesday, we begin our series on more than a carpenter. Now, I've just gotten some new books in today. And so if you have not purchased one yet, it's five dollars and you would like to get a book, please see me today. Um, or if you have already purchased one, but I have neglected to give you the book, uh, please see me today. Now, don't say, oh yeah, I paid you already, and then you didn't because then the Lord knows and you've got to deal with that. So, but if you're wanting a book, please make sure and see me. I'll tell you, if everybody who's gotten a book shows up, we're going to have a full sanctuary on Wednesday. So I'm excited about that, but it's going to be a, a great time. If you want to begin to read ahead, feel free to do that. Uh, but that's going to begin this coming Wednesday. I did also want to make mention that here in just a few weeks, we're going to have another water baptism. I've already got two people that are uh, signed up to be baptized. If you are interested in being baptized in water, you need to see me because we need to talk about some things. We need to make sure that you're uh, understanding everything and, and that you're in a place where you are ready to be baptized. But that's going to be on Sunday, March 20th, so just a few weeks away. Also, uh, just two weeks from today, we're going to be having our Women's Day where we will celebrate our ladies because we don't... S yeah, okay. Some of you are excited about it, you know. Some of you are like, uh, yeah, I guess I should be celebrated. And the men are like, I celebrate her every day. So, uh, but uh, we're, we're going to be having our Women's Day two weeks from today. And I've got a special guest speaker that's going to be coming. So, uh, Stephanie Gibson and uh, my wife is very excited about uh, this lady. I've not heard her myself yet, but I will in two weeks at Women's Day. So please make sure that you ladies come out and uh, that you allow yourselves to be celebrated on that day. One other thing, ladies, that I wanted to mention is that the Spring Fling on April 9th is going to be uh, taking place in Myrtle Beach, if I'm not mistaken. And there's something on the back of your bullet about that. If you are wanting to attend the Spring Fling in Myrtle Beach, the cost for registration is $30, but only if you get it in by March 9th. If you don't have it in by March 9th, the cost goes to 40 You don't want to pay $10 just because of your procrastination, right? Right. So go ahead and get the, I'm sorry. You actually only have till the 6th. So see, look, just like that, three days, bam, gone. So, uh, no, you need to get your, uh, your registration in to uh, Ms. Tanya by the 6th to make sure and get that $30 rate. Otherwise, uh, we're going to put a convenience fee on there as well, and it'll go to $95. So just keep that in mind. There's some other announcements on, uh, in the bulletin. Just feel free to take a look at those when you get an opportunity. And if you have any questions about any of that, then be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. All right. Are you ready to worship the Lord today? Let's stand as we open up with a song today and uh, we worship him. Well, oh, I want to see him. Oh, look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, oh, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. And oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, oh, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. And oh, I want to see him look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, oh, let me live my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. And oh, I want to see him look on his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, oh, let me live my voice. Cares all past. 
home at last, never to rejoice. Come on and give the Lord the best praise you can this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Oak Grove today. So glad to have each and every one of you here in the house of the Lord this morning. And uh, what a great looking crowd that we have. Y'all are handsome and pretty and all of that. And if, uh, if somebody tells you that you're not, tell them they're a liar and they need to go to the altar. Amen. We're going to get started and uh, we're going to open up with prayer. We've got some pretty amazing things that are going to be happening today. Some things that the Lord has laid on my heart. Um, many of you... Uh, may have I don't know I actually didn't go back to see the number of views maybe hardly any of you have uh, seen the live video that I did yesterday and I was I was just kind of waiting all week for the Lord to give me a word and then finally the Lord began to give me a word and I've got the notes written down and all that and I was just getting ready to get to the place where I was going to type up the notes and the Lord said yeah hold on to that because I got something else for you instead and so he has laid something on my heart uh, for this church that I believe is going to change this church and I believe it's going to change this church for the better. I believe that we're going to see great attacks from the enemy, but I also believe we're going to see some amazing things happen in, in our lives that God is going to bless us with. And we'll get to that here in just a little bit. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But, but let's go to the Lord in prayer as we uh, open up today. Uh, of course, we definitely want to remember the situation in Ukraine. and We'll be talking about that here in just a little while when we take up our love offering. Um, I've also been asked to mention Kayla Floyd. This is Sister Lisa's niece, and uh, she had surgery and uh, is desperately needing our prayers. And so please, let's remember her in our prayers. I know that there's many others that have been mentioned that uh, they, need, they need a touch from God. They need healing. And thank God that we serve a healer. Amen? Amen. Thank God that he is Jehovah Rapha, that he is our healer, and that he will supply our needs. And sometimes those needs, instead of being money, sometimes those needs are we need a healing. Amen? Amen. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. I know that you have a need. If you have a need, just lift up your hands, and I want you to just picture yourself right now giving that need to the burden bearer. Giving that need to the one who can meet that need. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we open up today. Almighty God, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come again into your house. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to have a time to be able to worship together as a family as a body, as a unit, Father. We thank you, Lord, every opportunity that we have to come and to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we consider it an honor and we consider it a privilege, God. And so we ask now, Lord, that as we bring our needs to you, you will meet each need according to your will, God, that you will bear the burdens that we have in our hearts and in our lives. God, give us the trust and the faith to believe that you have everything in your hands. And Lord, we will make sure and give you praise as these requests are answered, as these needs are met, we'll make sure to give you the praise and to honor you for all that you have done. Now we ask that you will take this time as we lift up your name in praise and in worship, as we hear the word that you have laid on my heart, God, as we have a time in the altar where we are beseeching you, God, Lord, I pray that everything we do today will bring you honor and will bring you glory because you and you alone are worthy to receive it. We give you honor and praise today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Remain standing as we uh, enter into a time of praise and worship today. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. We're singing hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. No more crying there, cause we are going to see the King. There'll be no more crying there, cause we are going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. We're singing hallelujah, hallelujah, 
We're going to see the King. Jesus will be there. We are going to see the King. Jesus will be there. We are going to see the King. Jesus will be there. We are going to see the King. We're singing hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the King. There's a song in my heart now, for I'm looking for Jesus. I've been reading his promise that he will return. He's preparing a mansion in that city called heaven. And I'm ready to move in to make it my home. Oh, how it thrills my soul to know he's coming. What a happy day. With all the raptured saints, I'll soon be singing as we sail away. I can almost hear the trumpets. See the dead in Christ rising, and I'm ready to join them. Oh, wonderful day! I shall ever look upward, for I know He is coming, and forever I'll be with. Him who died for me, and I don't want to be sleeping, but I want to be working, for the Lord shall reward me for all that I do. Oh, how it thrills my soul to know he's coming. What a happy day. With all the raptured saints, I'll soon be singing as we sail away. I can almost hear the trumpet, see the dead in Christ rising. And I'm ready to join them, oh, wonderful day. Now I'm heeding his warning, just to watch and be ready. For I know that he quickly, as a thief, will come. When the trumpet has sounded and the graves are all open, I shall join with the saved ones to sing a new song. Oh, how it thrills my soul to know he's coming. What a all the raptured saints I'll soon be singing as we sail away. I can almost hear the trumpet, see the dead in Christ rising, and I'm ready to join them. Oh, wonderful day. Amen. Amen. We are almost able to hear those trumpets sound. Amen. 
We see the signs of the times and we know that it can't be long before the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated for a few moments. And I'm going to ask our ushers to come at this time. We're going to receive this morning's tithe and offering. Now, I do want to let you know that this offering is just our regular tithe and offering. We are going to be having a love offering here in just a few moments uh, for uh, Ukraine. And uh, we'll be doing that in, in, like I said, in just a few months. And I want to thank you, by the way. From what I understand, we've already had people who have been giving electronically towards the love offering that we're going to be taking up here in a little while. And I appreciate that. And thank you so much. For your giving thank you so much for allowing the lord to bless through you with what he's given you amen but uh this is our regular tithe and offering we appreciate excuse me appreciate you giving being faithful with that and i know that the lord is going to bless you many 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 times over amen father we thank you for all that you have provided for us lord we thank you that you are are never going to forsake us that you're never going to leave us lord we know that you're always going to provide for our every need according to riches and glory and father we just ask in the name of jesus that as we give today lord that you will just bless it many times over and let it be something that will be able to help souls be one to the kingdom of god and we praise you and thank you for all you do and all you're going to do in jesus name amen amen god bless you as you give today Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for your giving. I know the Lord's going to bless you and bless you and bless you. Amen. I'm going to ask our children that are going to be going to Children's Church if they'd make their way to the front at this time. I just want to talk to you for a minute before I let you go to Children's Church. And if you're too old to go to Children's Church, just sit down. I saw Gary getting up, and I don't, I just, no, I'm just kidding. Come on, kids. You just come sit right up here on the front pew. It's fine. You don't have to get on the floor if you don't want to, or you can. I'm not going to stop you. All right, Alan, if you want to get on the floor, you can now. You don't have to. Your brother's going to try to make you, but he was, you may be seated. Okay, so here's a, they're, they're looking at you, Alan. They're wanting you to come. come so. Oh, they're looking at Jackson. Okay. You know what? They, well, they're not looking at me, so I'll just go over here then. So. All right, everybody's moving this way. Okay, I'll move this way with you. I got no problem with that. So, all right, we just took up the offering, right? And, um, and we give because the Lord tells us that we need to give and, and because the Bible tells us that where our treasure is, that our heart is also. So, um, you know, we, we want to make sure that the Lord knows that everything that we have, that we'll give it right back to him. That, you know, we'll, we'll do whatever we got to do. But I know that Jacob really likes tractors and farms and all that kind of stuff, right? You like that kind of thing? Okay, if you were to take a, a corn seed, or I, I don't know how that works, so farmers, please don't yell at me, all right? I'm, I'm lucky that I've grown this. This is about all I can cultivate. So, but if you were to take one seed and put it in the ground, do you think you're only going to get like one ear of corn? Or do you think you're only going to get one carrot? Or you're only going to get one watermelon? No, there's always more that comes up, right? You put some seeds in the ground, and there's always more that comes up than what you put in the ground. Well, the Bible says that if we give, that it's going to be given back to us, but it doesn't just say it's going to be given back to us. Like if I give 
Jackson a dollar and then he gives me a dollar, okay, well, you know, that's just giving it back to me. But if I give Jackson a dollar, he gives me ten dollars. You should do that sometime. Uh, then, you know, it, it's multiplied. It's gotten more and more and more. And the Bible says that if we give, it's going to be given back, but it'll be pressed down. It'll be shaken together, you know, to make everything get to the bottom. It'll be running over. It's, in other words, God is saying, if you give just this much, I'm going to give you back this much. And it's not just our money, but it's our time, and it's our prayers, and it's the time that we spend reading the Bible. The more that we give of ourselves to God, the more that he's going to give of himself to us. And you might say, well, I don't have a job, and first of all, I know you all get money, so don't even lie. But second of all, uh, but the, the big thing, though, is this something you guys need to learn when you're young? That as we give to God, that God's going to give back to us, but he's going to give way more than what we could ever give him. All right? All right, we're going to pray, and then you guys are going to go to Children's Church, and, and you're going to have a wonderful time. All right? Father, we thank you so much that we can instill these biblical principles in our children because, God, they need to grow up knowing what your word says. Father, as they're hearing all the other things that they're learning and things that are good and things that are bad, God, we want to make sure that they're also learning what the Bible has to say about how they need to live their lives. And I pray that they will be open to your word. I pray that they'll remember it, that it will, it will take root in their hearts. And God, just as if they memorize one scripture, they learn one part of the Bible, Lord, that you will just multiply it many times over that a great harvest of the Spirit will come forth. In Jesus' name, everybody said... Amen. Amen. All right, you guys can go to Children's Church. Let our kids know that we're so glad to see them and have them in Children's Church today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As I had mentioned in my video yesterday, and also as I had mentioned a little bit ago, we are in a place right now where we're seeing what's happening in the world. And, you know, there are things that God has given us, and he's put us in such a wonderful, we're, we're blessed to be born in the United States of America. I don't care what anybody says. Anybody can be as political as they want to be. Everybody can say, oh, we have all of our problems. We do. But our problems are nothing compared to the problems that others around this world are seeing. And the fact that you were born in the United States, or even just the fact that you live in the United States, you need to consider yourself blessed. It's not perfect by any means, but I can't think of another place that I would rather be. So, as we've been given all these blessings, there are things that are required of us. You know, God's not just going to bless us just for us to hoard it all and keep it all to ourselves. We know that because that's scriptural, because you take a look at what the Bible says about the talents that were given, and, and this one got this much, and this one got that much, and this one got this, and, and you saw what they were given, and the one that got in trouble with their master was the one that just held on to what they had instead of doing something with it. So, and I know I'm, I'm kind of preaching to the choir here because our church is a giving church. Our church is a church that believes in, in blessing people. Our church is a church that believes that everything we've been given, that it all belongs to God. And that if he needs us to give, if he needs us to do something so that his work can be done, we're going to do that freely. So I'm going to have a video shown in just a moment here, just kind of explaining what, what I'm talking about. But uh, Pastor Tim Nail, he's the one that's going to be on this video, he had uh, contacted me yesterday, and he had said, uh, that they had this opportunity to send these trailers full of food and supplies to the Ukraine. Now, I do want to let you know, let me just go ahead and read exactly what was sent to me. Uh, Bishop Beecham, he is, our, uh, he is our general superintendent for the IPHC uh, International. And um, he sent this and said, Thank you for your prayers for Ukraine. As of Saturday, I was informed that to that point, the people in our congregations there, including in Kiev, were safe. Thank you, Jesus. They were asking for prayer and are thankful for our support. As we learn more, we will keep everyone informed. So we thank God that our, our churches in uh, Ukraine, uh, that the people are safe. But the problem is, is that the shelves are empty. Uh, they're, they're starting to go hungry. That's what happens in these situations. 
and we have an opportunity where we can help in some way. So go ahead and show that video real quick, and I'll probably have you cut it off here towards the end because he starts telling people to come to Lake City, and we don't want you to do that. <laughs> great tonight, and I appreciate you being here with me for this little short video here. We are working to raise money for the Ukraine. Many of you have watched that last night we gathered around the tell his service times and I don't want you going there so uh, anyway uh, they're the same time as ours so you, you can't make it over there but uh, it is something that we're able to do you know we, we can't pick up a weapon and, and go over there and unfortunately some of our men and women might have to do that and we need to be praying for them we need to be lifting them up and praying that God's protection will be upon them. I'm praying that this whole situation is going to be resolved very quickly, much more quickly than anybody is even anticipating, that the conflict will, will die down and that, uh, and that uh, these people will be safe and that our men and women in, that are fighting will not have to go over and will not have to be a part of that. So um, that's what I'm praying. But in the meantime, what we can do as a church is obviously we can lift them up in prayer. If you're not already doing that, I'm, I'm wondering why. Because if you're not already, what's been happening over the past several days and praying for God's protection, then you know, begin that today, please. But if you are able to give, and some of you may not have anything today, you may not be able to give today, we're going to uh, be taking in money all the way up until next Sunday, and then we'll be sending a check over to uh, the district in Lake City. Uh, you can give electronically, you can give through PayPal at Oak Grove PHC, you can give through Venmo at Oak Grove PHC, the O and the G and PHC are capitalized on Venmo, that's my own fault, I don't know why I didn't do it all the same, I don't know, but just let's move on from there. But, uh, or you can give today. And I know that the Lord is going to bless you. I'm going to ask our ushers to come one more time if they would. And we're going to receive this offering. And um, I'm not expecting us to 
uh, to raise enough to do a whole trailer by ourselves. I'm not saying that that's what I want Oak Grove to do. If we do it, then that's fantastic. But I do know that whatever you're able to give is going to be a blessing. And whatever you're able to give, that there are people on the other side of the world that are going to be blessed by your generosity and going to be blessed by your heart being opened and saying, I don't know these people. I don't know anything about them. I, don't, I couldn't even pick out Ukraine on a map, but I do know this, that I want to try to help. I want to try to feed them. I want to try to give them some supplies, whatever we can do. And you won't even know the difference that you've made until you reach glory. So thank you so much in advance for your giving. I just want us to pray before we receive the offering today. Father, I thank you so much that you have put us in this great country. Lord, I just ask, Father, that we will take the blessings that you have given us. And Lord, that we will just give them back to you, Father, by ministering to people that we don't even know but what we do know is this that you love them that you care for them that they are your creation and so father even from our little town from our church lord let us be a blessing to these people and as everyone gives today lord they're not giving out of obligation they're giving out of the love of jesus christ and Lord, any time that we give out of love, and any time we give with the heart of Christ, great and wonderful things are going to happen. I thank you in advance for all the lives that are going to be touched because of the seed being sown today. We glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you give. And then if you would, stand to your feet so we can go to a time of worship today. You know, as the pastor said, we are truly blessed to live in our nation and to be able to worship freely. But, you know, more than that, we're truly blessed for the love that the Lord has given us, the mercy he's given us, and that amazing grace that he has shown us. As we go into this hour of worship here, let's show him how much we are appreciative of that amazing grace that he has given us. Let's worship this morning. Amazing grace. How Yeah.
this morning. He is my
shall bow every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Just lift up your hands and just say, you are my Lord, God. Hallelujah. Lord, you are my Lord. You're my Savior. You are my ruler. You're my provider. You're my Lord. You're my everything, God. And we just worship you. Let every knee bow down and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ and Him alone is Lord of Lords and He is King of Kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We glorify you, God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Remain standing for the reading of the word today, if you would. Glory to God. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, music. And if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to two places, two very familiar passages of Scripture. The book of Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. Some of you may even be able to quote that. Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. And then we're going to be looking at James chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this house. Glory to God. Glory to God. Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. And then we look at James chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, man, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Lord, I thank you for the word that you have placed in my heart today. God, I thank you for what you're getting ready to do in the hearts and the minds and the lives of your people. Father, I pray that they are here in the congregation with us or watching online. Lord, that you will stir them up, stir up their spirits, stir up their hearts even now, Lord Jesus. God, the ground has to be tilled before the seed can be sown. And I believe you've already begun tilling. Lord, will you just turn us over? Make us ready to receive your word so that we will respond the way that you desire us to respond. We give you glory and praise in the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning. <clears throat> I want to talk to you today about are you serious? Your pastor is not serious very often. And I've told you, and you have learned this on your own, that if I'm not preaching or teaching, Take whatever I say with a grain of salt, because it may not be true. Because I'm, I joke around too much, and I know that, and that's fine, and some of you love it, and you laugh with me, and others roll your eyes, and so I try not to joke with you as much, but that's okay. But being serious, you're being determined about something, being persuaded about something, saying, this is the way it is, this is the way. I want to ask you today, are you serious about your relationship with Jesus Christ? And the answer would be, amen. Absolutely I am, Pastor. No question about it. Well, I'm setting you up, so get ready. Are you serious, not only about having a relationship with God and, and receiving all the benefits and you know, having Him love you and having Him provide for you and having Him forgive you and heal you and all this kind of thing and touch your family. You know, that's all wonderful. Are you serious also about being a servant of God? Oh, this is where maybe we back off a little bit. Well, I don't know. What do you want? That's not what I want. It's what God wants. 
Are you serious about making him Lord? We just sang, he is Lord. Lord is not just some word that we throw out there that just means, yeah, he's a great guy. That's not what Lord means. Lord means that he is over you, that he governs you, that you don't live your life without him telling you how to live it, that you do things based on what he wants you to do, not that you live your life on your own. Know ye not that you are not your own, but you are bought with a price. Some people have a hard time understanding that. Some people have a hard time accepting it. Oh, I'm still my own person. Well, then you're not sold out to God. Because when you are sold out to God, when you are serious about saying that He is my Lord, He is my Master. We use that, that word in songs all the time. He is my Savior, my Lord and my Master. Oh, Jesus is precious to me. Did you hear that you said Master? means he's in charge it means that your life is not your own but that you give it to god and as he decides for you to live that's how you live are you serious that he is your lord do you mean it when you say that you are a born-again christian that you have been bought by the blood of the lamb and that jesus christ is your lord are you serious about that and if I were to just ask you individually, you would say, absolutely I am. There's no question about it. If I were to ask you here in front of everybody, I'm sure you'd say, oh yes, brother, and I'm wanting to get even closer to him because that's the answer that we should give. And then we go home and go, that preacher was crazy. I ain't going to do that. Well, I just said what I had to say. And, and, you know, and, and you know, the thing is, is that there's an understanding that Jesus and I have. And, I, you know, and I've heard that, and I, I've used it a couple of times in sermons lately, and, and it's because I keep hearing it about people that have these understandings, and my understanding is what the Word says. My understanding is that I am not my own, but I am bought with a price, which means everything that I do, every day that I live, every breath that I breathe, every action that I take, that it is completely dependent upon whether God wants me to do that or not. And when you live that way, you know what you're not going to do? Fall into sin. Because guess what? God never wants you to sin. In fact, it goes completely against the will of God because the definition of sin is a willful and intentional transgression against the law and will of God. So if God doesn't want you to do something and you do it anyway, that's sin. That's rebellion. And rebellion's as bad as witchcraft. And the Old Testament says we've got to stone witches, so who just start lining up? No, I'm kidding. Thank God for grace, amen? <laughs> we sing about grace, too, so thank God for grace. Otherwise, ain't none of us be in here. I mean, how many of you at some point in time you thought, yeah, somebody needed to throw a rock at me because of what I did? I know there are a couple of you I've wanted to throw. Anyway, but... My, my question today, are you serious, is because of the fact that what we have in the church and the reason why the church is not the power that the church should be in the world today is we have a bunch of people professing, a bunch of people confessing, but nobody's wanting to live it. Nobody's wanting to actually make that a part of their life. Nobody's wanting to say, God is the absolute. He is the number one. He is the one who gives me permission to do everything that I do. And nothing that I do is going to be anything that God doesn't want me to do and if God ever says to do this I will do this freely gladly because I am not my own but I am bought with a price if the church would would as a whole as a body would grasp that concept and realize that us having faith and being persuaded about who God is and being determined in our relationship with God if we would realize that in our faith that we need to do more than just talk about it we need to do more than just play the game but we actually need to live it we would see a power come in the church that would be world changing why do you think it was that back in the days of the apostles that the church made such a difference in their communities everybody was new everybody was a new christian everybody was excited about what they were now a part of. And so the church as a whole 
had power. It had power to change the environment. And those of you who were here when I was uh, teaching on the churches of Revelation, uh, you may remember, it was a long time ago because it was the first one we did, but you may remember with Ephesus how I said that there was such a revival in the city of Ephesus that a revolt came from the people who made idols and made other dishes and for idol worship because nobody was buying what they were selling anymore because everybody was turning to Jesus Christ. That's the kind of revival that we need in America. What we need is not for the church to bow down and to say, well, okay, I, maybe I'm not as serious about my commitment to God and to the Word as, as I thought. You know, it seems like society is wanting it to be this way, and we're not wanting to rock the boat. We're not wanting to make them feel bad about themselves. We're wanting to show them the love of Jesus. So we're, we're going to stop preaching about this subject. We're going to stop preaching about that subject, and we're going to start accepting that this is actually an okay thing, and maybe we've just misinterpreted Scripture. We've got churches with absolutely no backbone. We've got churches that are, are, are just, they're filled up the pews but they're emptying out their their souls and they're they're trading everything that god has given us everything the holy spirit has given us they're trading that for the things of the world and all that is is corruption all that is is the corruptible all that is is just garbage that's going to eventually drag you to hell so are you serious? When I ask you, are you serious? Are you really serious about your relationship with Jesus Christ? You're here today. That's a good thing. That's a, a step in the right direction. You're in this place today. You have taken this time to come into worship, and I thank you for being here. And it's so wonderful to see that we're starting to get our crowd back and that people are finally starting to, uh, to say, you know, no matter what, I've got to get back in church and I've got to be among other people who are praising God and lifting up His holy name. I thank you for that. That's not all you need to be serious about. What about when you go home? You're only here for a couple of hours a week. What's happening at your house? Are you serious about being consecrated to God? Are you serious about being sanctified from the things of the world and living a holy life, a holy life that is separate from what the world is? Are you serious about that? Or are you just playing games? Are you serious about saying that you want God to move? If I were to ask you right now, how many of you want to see a great move of God in this house? Oh, hands are going to go up. Amen, brother. Hallelujah. Might even be a couple tears shed and glory to God. And absolutely, that's what I want. Well, are you serious about it to where you're willing to do whatever it takes to get that to happen? Because let me tell you something. The whole concept of we can just start a certain song and as soon as that chord hits, all of a sudden, here comes the power and everything's great and wonderful and marvelous. And there's been no preparation in our souls before. You're out of your mind. Do you really believe that God is going to take the greatest power that the universe has ever known in the Holy Spirit? Do you really believe that God is going to shower that down upon a people that haven't even prayed to get their lives right with God? Do you really think that God is going to fill you with His presence when you aren't even willing to fill your life with His? A lot of churches think the answer is to get you know, this program going, that program going, get this music going, get the lights going, you know. Let's, boy, the pastor would just stop wearing a tie, would come in, in jeans and a, and a shirt, you know, just like the guys on TV. If he would just start doing, I can do that if you want. But I'm still going to preach that you've got to be holy. I mean, you don't want me to wear a tie. I ain't got to wear a tie. I ain't got no problem with that. I like wearing ties. My wife thinks I look good. So she likes it when I wear a tie. Well, I was already halfway through. She's like, why'd you take it off? Are you serious? No. You know, if, if, the, if we would just have a coffee shop in the foyer so that when people come to church on a Sunday morning, they're so tired that they can get themselves a, a nice latte or a macchiato or a mocha java something or and they can get some extra whipped cream on it. And if they would just have that, I believe that the Lord is just going to bless us. Friend, You've lost your mind. God could care less if you had coffee this morning. 
that's not the preparation he's looking for. God could care less if your pastor's walking around looking like he's something out of Abercrombie and Fitch. Do they even still have that? I don't know. I shop at Walmart, so what do I know? God could care less if everybody comes in and they all look like that they should be on a magazine of hipster church or something of that nature. He doesn't care about that because that's not preparation for the power. If you're serious about seeing a move of God in the church, what, have you, what are you doing when you're not in church to prepare for it? What are you doing to get ready for that move of God? What are you doing? We, we, we've been having prayer night on Monday nights, and I want to thank every one of you who has been coming out to prayer night on Monday nights. Those of you who haven't come out, why? Well, I'm busy. I, I had to work late, and I'm tired by the time I get home. Oh, okay, that's fine. That's fine. So if we moved it to a different night, then you would come. Well, but that night I've got this and this and it. Listen, I'm not trying to get in all up in your business. Maybe I am. I don't know. I'm not trying to get all up in your business. I'm not trying to make everybody mad at me and say, well, preacher, you're just, you're being unreasonable and, and you know, this is what you do for a living and da, da, da. You know what? When she was working uh, 12 hours a day and when I was working nine hours a day and, or 10 hours a day and we would come home, you know what we did? We still passed her to church. We still passed her to church. We still went to church. We were still involved in church. And that's not to pat myself on the back. What I'm saying is you will make time to do what you prioritize. Wow, I did not expect to go this way. This is what happens when God gives me something at the last minute, Brian. Because I don't have notes to keep me on. And, and then I just let him just kind of tell me what to say. And then I get in trouble. Ain't nobody mad at the Holy Ghost right now. Oh, talking about that meddling preacher. Are you serious about wanting to see a move of God in Oak Grove? All right. Then get ready for a challenge. Can we put that slide up, please? Here's what the Lord has given me. This was on the way to uh, on the way home yesterday. And I was not thinking in this direction. I was just listening to some music just thinking about how all the stuff I needed to do when I got home. And the Lord put this in my heart. Four weeks from today, March 27th, will mark the beginning of the, the last 40 weeks of the year. So in other words, four, as of today, there are 44 weeks left in 2022. So in four weeks, it'll be 40. That's 44 minus 4. I can do that. Before Jesus began his ministry, he went and prayed. Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, the Creator of all that is, prayed and fasted before he began his ministry. He prepared. Did he have to? No. He's Jesus. But so many things that Jesus did in his life were simply to be an example to us. You know what happened after Jesus came down from the mountain? He healed the leper. He healed the centurion's uh, son. He healed Peter, uh, Peter's mother-in-law. Maybe Peter wanted him to. Maybe Peter didn't. I don't know. He all of a sudden, he, people began to bring uh, people that were filled with demons, and he cast out all the devils. And the Word of God says that and he healed everyone that came to him. Not only did he do that, then he goes to the Gadarenes after he's uh, done doing all that stuff, and a legion, 10,000 demons in this man, comes running to him, begging him for mercy. He didn't even have to go and look for him. He just came running to him, begging him for mercy. And all Jesus said was, he asked what his name was, and then he said, go. And he was cast out into the, into the swine. That's what happens when you prepare for the power. That's what happens. So what God is calling this church to do, because this is what he has told your pastor that this church needs to do. Beginning on the week of March 27th, I need people who are going to commit to fast and pray one day a week, every week, for the rest of the year. 
That would be 40 days of fasting. Now, I've got ushers that have some cards. Uh, do you have those, brother? All right, if you would get some people to begin passing them out, please. And I want everyone to have one, please. Um, even if you're like, preacher, you're out of your mind. I ain't doing that. Take a card anyway so you don't look bad. Now, some of you might have a problem with what I'm about to do here, but I'm going to explain it in just a moment. Here's the thing. What the Lord has laid on my heart, because I have been praying and I have been seeking God for transformational revival. I've been seeking God that our church would be a place that would win souls uh, to Jesus Christ. I've been praying that God would make our church a beacon in this community. I've been praying that people will be drawn to this church not because of something special going on and oh man, the preacher's great or the music's great or the kids are great or blah, 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 but they would be drawn and they don't even know why they're being drawn here, but when they come here, that they would be changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what I have been praying. And so God says, okay, well then do this. What I am asking everyone is this. I need people who are willing to say, Pastor, I will fast and pray one day a week, beginning the week of March 27th, which, by the way, happens to be the last day of our district revival. Just thought I'd throw that out there. That beginning that week, I will fast one day a week and uh, fast and pray one day a week. Now, there's a couple things that I need to let you know. Please don't try to do one of these things. Well, I'm, I'm fasting uh, Starbucks. I'll get my coffee from Parker's. I mean, it's not as good. But, you know, I'm willing to make that sacrifice. Okay, let me, let me, let me try to put some, some rules here. Um, when I say fast and pray, I mean I want you to not eat, and instead of eating, to pray. Because... If you just don't eat, that's a diet. But if you take that time and you say, Lord, I'm willing to push away the plate to satisfy my, that would satisfy my physical wants, my physical desires, I'm willing to push that plate aside and instead take that time to build up my spiritual life. Instead take that time to build up my relationship with you because I'm serious about what I want to have happen in my life and in my church. I'm serious about it. Now, here's the thing. I want you to take these cards and, and, well, let me back up a little bit. If you have a health issue and you say, well, well Pastor, I can't, I can't fast uh, an entire day. I have certain medicines that I have to take uh, with a meal. Otherwise, I get very, very sick and all that kind of thing. I, I don't want you to do this. But I do want you to take one day to at least pray, okay? But I don't want you to do the fast. If you say, now, if you say, oh, Pastor, I would do this, but I have this condition where if I don't eat, my stomach hurts. You can probably still do it. I think you'll be okay. My tummy hurts too when I don't eat. And I get grouchy. And Crystal knows it. If you are physically able to do this, I want you to consider doing this. Now, you might say, well, but pastor, I don't think that I need to be filling out this card. I'll just do it, but I won't tell you when I'm doing it because the thing is, you know, I don't want to be like a Pharisee and flaunt what I'm, I'm doing and, and nobody else needs to know that's between me and God. Okay, let me explain something to you. The Lord has laid this on my heart for a purpose. These cards are not going to be shared with anybody. This is for me, okay? I want to know who is, is backing me. I want to know who it is that's going to be uh, fasting. And uh, what I want you to do is I want you, if you're going to do it, I want you to pray about it and find out what day you're going to commit to. And so that you will let me know, because here's what your pastor is going to do. If I don't have somebody fasting every single day of the week, I'm going to take that day. If I have to fast five days a week, y'all are in trouble. Because I'm going to start preaching an hour and a half every single time. And I'm going to start calling people to the altar by name and saying, we got to cast the devil out of you. I told you, I get grumpy when I get hungry. I'll fast five days a week. That's what I got to do, but you pastor going to be upset. The only reason I want to know who it is is because I actually want to try to encourage you every week 
I want to know what day you're fasting so that I can be an encouragement to you on that day. I'll shoot you a text. I'll make a phone call. Whatever it is that I've got to do, send you a message on Facebook just to say, listen, I know that this is your fasting day. I want you to know I'm praying for you. And I want you to know that I appreciate the sacrifice that you're making. I want to be able to be a support to you. But I also want to know that we have got every day for the last 40 weeks of this year that there will be somebody from Oak Grove that's going to be taking time and saying, Food is not as important to me as the power of the Holy Spirit in our church. I'm going to push away the plate, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to pray. I'm going to go, and I'm going to have praise time. I'm going to go and do whatever it is that I need to do. I'm going to take this day because I believe that God is going to do something amazing. Do you think that a church that's willing to say, I'm going to pray, or we're going to have somebody fasting and praying every day of the year, for the rest of the year, for the last 40 weeks of the year, do you believe that God's going to do something amazing? I believe that He is. I wouldn't ask any of you to go on a 40-day fast just to fast straight for 40 days. I couldn't do it. Unless it was fasting something like wearing shoes or something. I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to do that. But do you realize that if you agree to do this, that by the end of the year, you would have had 40 days of fasting and prayer that you would have put in this year? Do you think that God's just going to go, oh, that's nice, and walk away? Or do you think that you're going to see amazing things happen in your lives, in your children's lives, in your family's lives, in your husbands or your wives or your brothers or sisters? Or Do you believe that something amazing will happen? I believe it will because we will be showing God that we are serious, that we're not wanting to just get by. We're not wanting to just have church. We're not not wanting to just be you know a, a nice upstanding church in the community but instead we're wanting to see the power of God fill us to a way that makes us feel like we're going to burst to fill us to a way that we absolutely cannot contain are you serious about what you want from God this is something that's going to show this is something that's going to tell us if you're serious or if you're not, I'm not going to ask the ushers to come. I do want to thank the ushers for all the work I had them doing today. They've been walking back and forth all day long, and I appreciate that. I'm not going to take these up today, but what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm gonna ha I don't have it out there today, but I'm going to have a, a basket out on the table today where you can put in your card. But I want you to pray. You've got four weeks before we start this, I want you to pray that God will show you the day that you need to be fasting every single week. Now, obviously, if you say, okay, I'm going to fast on Tuesdays, and then you realize later on, hey, my birthday's on a Tuesday, you know, take another day that week in that situation. Take another day that week and fast. But otherwise, please stick to the day that the Lord lays on your heart, because there's a reason he put that day on your heart. Now, I want to make sure that somebody's fasting and praying every day. We're going to touch heaven. We're going to reach the throne of God. James 2, saying that our faith without works is dead. And he says, a man says, well, I show my faith, you know, you know I, I show my faith instead of my works. He said, well, okay, show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Your works don't get you to heaven. But you can show the faith that you have that God is going to do something incredible in your life and in your church. You can show the faith that you have by putting some feet to that faith and by saying, I'm going to do this. I'm going to fast and I'm going to pray. The Lord may even tell you to fast more than one day. That's up to you. That is completely between you and God. But will you just be willing to look at this and commit with me? Just to let you know, if you stop and think about it, if a if hundred of us, if, well, if, if 50 of us agree that we're going to take one day a week and we're going to fast and we're going to pray, that's 2,000 days of fasting and prayer that Oak Grove will get in by the end of the year. 2,000 days. God will move. Miracles will take place. People seem to be so far away from God that God himself couldn't even reach them will come crying to an altar of prayer and give their heart and life over to Jesus Christ. It will happen because we're showing God, yes, I am serious. Would you stand with me this morning? See, you got a little shorter sermon, but now I'm making you do something. So you got to figure out what you want. You want the longer sermons and without the obligations? Or <laughs> I 
We're going to open up this altar in just a moment, and anybody that will come, I just want you to come, and we're going to, we're going to pray, and we're going to believe that God's going to touch this. In case you haven't noticed, in a little over, I think it's like close 16 months now that we've been here, in case you haven't noticed, God will speak to me, and I'll listen to him. And he will tell me to do stuff, and I'll do it. And I don't understand. I don't know why. I get confused sometimes, but I do what God says to do. And you know, so far, everything that I've said, or that God has said, here, do this, and I said, yes, sir, and I did it. You know, God has blessed every single thing so far. I believe this is going to be the biggest thing that this church has done in a long time. And I believe that we're going to see the greatest rewards. If nothing else, I believe you are going to draw closer to God in your own personal relationship if you agree to be a part of this. Now, I'll, I'll just tell you, if you say, you know what, I just don't want to do this, then don't do it. I don't want you to be resentful. I don't need anybody going, oh, it's my fasting day. To it. I want you to be looking forward to it. And I was saying the thing about how some people would say, oh, well, this being pharisaical, saying what day I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fast. No, no, what's pharisaical is when somebody says, hey, have you heard what the forecast is? Well, I'll tell you what the forecast is going to be, hungry, because I'm fasting today. <laughs> oh, I'm just starving. But, you know, it's all for Jesus. I'm just going to give it over to God. But hey, how, do you fast? You should, because you look like you could lose a few. But, you know, I mean, that's, okay, that's bad. Don't do that. Okay, don't make a big deal. And somebody says, good morning, and you say, what's good about it? I can't eat. Stop. Okay, don't do that. All we're doing is that we're coming together as a body, and we're saying we're going to do this. This is the day I'm going to do it. I'm going to make this commitment. Well, preacher, what happens if I sign that card and I don't do it? Well, that's between you and God. I ain't going to ask you. I ain't going to put surveillance on your house and see if you go get a whopper or something like that. I ain't going to do any of that. But God knows. God knows. Musicians, would you come please? And then just everyone that will, if you'll just come to the altar and just stand and just begin to pray. Because here's the thing, what I want us to pray is that God will honor our sacrifice. And, And here's the thing, we know he's going to because he says he will. You know, just like I was telling the kids, where, you know, if we give, it's going to be given, pressed down, shaken together, running over, it will be flowing into our bosom. We know that the Word of God says that, and it's not always money, though. Sometimes it's time. Sometimes it's, it's our effort. Sometimes it's our prayers. But what I want you to do is the musicians begin to play here in just a moment. What I want you to think about is this. I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to think about something in your life where you need a miracle. And I'm not talking about Oh, I got a lot bill I got to pay today, and, and I don't have it. I'm talking about something that maybe you've written off a long time ago. Maybe you said, this is never going to happen. God has just said no. I want you to begin to think about that miracle that you need. I want you to begin to think about that person in your life, that family member that's so far away from God, you just don't even like to think about it. And I want you to begin to picture God working on their heart because of your efforts, God working on their heart and them coming to Jesus Christ. I want you to think about somebody who is struggling physically, that the doctors are writing them off, that everybody, every therapist, every doctor, every specialist they've gone to said there's really nothing we can do. They just got to live with this until they die. And I want you to picture God raising them up and healing them completely. Oh, well, God doesn't do that anymore. He doesn't do that anymore because the church isn't prepared for the power for it to happen. That's why it doesn't happen anymore. It's not that He has changed. It's that we have accepted less than what we are entitled to. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And we have accepted just crumbs from the Master's table instead of sitting at the table where we have been made worthy and where our place has been set and enjoying the feast that God is giving us. We've accepted less because we haven't prepared for the best. We have accepted less because we haven't prepared for the best. So I want us to begin to pray right now. 
I want you to lift up your hands. I want you to lift up your voices. I want you to be serious about this. Are you serious about seeing God do something different in your life and in this church and in the lives of your families? Then be serious about it and lift it up to God right now. Let's just begin to glorify Him. Let's begin to pray right now in the name of Jesus. Almighty Father, Lord, we thank You because we we are serious about our relationship with You. We're serious about being obedient to You, God. And Lord, I know that You have placed this on my heart for this church. I know that You have placed it on my heart at this time for this church to participate in. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that You will deal with the hearts and the minds of those that are in this place. God, that those that are able, Lord, that You will draw them to this and they will say, yes, we will make this commitment that I will do this and I will will lift up the name of Jesus. I will take this time to push away the plate and to lift him up instead. I will take this time once a week where I'm going to pray and I'm going to fast and I'm going to believe God for miracles. And I thank you in advance, God, for the miracles that are going to take place. I thank you in advance, Father, for the addictions that are going to be broken. I thank you in advance, God, for the souls that are going to be one to Jesus Christ. I thank you in advance, God, for the mental illness that's going to be healed, for the the physical illness that's going to be healed <coughs> in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, for the miracles that are going to rain down from heaven because of the sacrifice that we're making. You're going to honor that, Lord. Lord, you wouldn't have put it on my heart to bring to this church if you didn't have great plans for what you wanted this church to be. If you didn't have great plans for what you wanted to happen in this building, in this congregation, in this body. Lord, I know that you wouldn't have put it in my heart as pastor if you didn't already have a plan for how you're going to move. God, I know we're going to be attacked left and right. I know the enemy is going to do everything in his power to try to discourage us, to try to dissuade us, to try to stop us from doing this. But Lord, give us the resolve. Give us the seriousness, the determination, the persuasion, God, that we will stand and we will say that the, nothing the enemy will bring against me is going to prosper and nothing the enemy will bring against me is going to stand and instead that we will see the glory of God because of what this church is going to do. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you will just use us. God, use us as your vessels. Lord, we're ready for a great and amazing move of God. God, we don't want just to have a couple of nice little feelings. We don't want to have a couple of nice services. God, we want a transformation to happen in our minds and in our hearts and in our community. Lord, we want to be, Father, the unit. We want to be the instrument. God, that you use for that in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now begin to thank him for all that he's going to do. Begin to thank him that he's going to save souls because of what this church is doing. Thank him that people are going to be healed because of what this church is going to sacrifice. Thank him that chains are going to be broken, that bondages are going to be gone, that, that the enslaved to sin are going to be free in God because of what we are going to do. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you for the power of your presence. And we pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you will just receive our sacrifice and that you will bless our sacrifice, Lord, and that honor will come to you, God, because of what we do. That glory will come to you, God, because of what we do in this place. That people will hear the stories. That people will hear the accounts of people being miraculously healed in this church because of the sacrifice that this body is made. Making. God, it, it can't just be the pastor. It can't just be me, Lord. It has to be the body that comes together and says that we're going to glorify Him, that we're going to honor Him in our efforts. And we thank You and we praise You, Father, in the name of Jesus. Would you just offer up a praise unto the Lord today? Thank Him for what He's going to do in this house. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Healings are going to take place. Souls are going to be one to the kingdom of God. Chains are going to be broken in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. If you've already decided to commit to this and you filled out your card, 
you can give that to me or to my wife and we'll take that. Like I said, I'll have a basket out there uh, next week. Uh, actually, on Wednesday, I'll have something out there. You can drop it in. Begin to pray if you're going to do this. Begin to pray that God shows you what day to do. And we actually, we, we won't have Sundays as a fast day. That's just a hard day for anybody to fast. We won't have Sundays as a fast day, but we will have that time to come and to worship Him and to lift Him up. Amen. So Monday through Saturday, just pick a day and let the Lord uh, lay that on your heart. And I believe that this Fast 40 initiative that God has laid on my heart, that it's going to be a game changer for this church. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all of your wonderful blessings. We thank you for your presence that's been in this place. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that as we leave this house today, Lord, that you will let us leave under your anointing. God, that you will let us leave encouraged by the Holy Spirit. God, that you will let us leave hungry to see more things happen in this church and in your kingdom, God. Lord, it's not for our glory, but it's for your glory. God, it's not for our honor, but it's for your honor. And I pray for every household that's represented in this place that you will bless them, that you will touch them. Let us dismiss from this place, but never from your presence. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Pray and believe that God's going to do something great. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hey.